Here we go. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Whatever you assume, you then are placed in the lowest form of knowledge that exists. But when you think even, when you think something that's just a little bit above what you assume, because anything you just think you can be talked out of. I'm Mike Freeman here, and thank you for tuning in today. We have all heard of laws of motion and the law of gravity. They regulate how objects move in our everyday lives. Every law has a predictable outcome. You need to know that. Say, say for instance, uh, you threw a coin off the top of a building it would immediately fall to the ground because of what law? That's right, the law of gravity. Well on today, we're going to start a new series. I know you like new, I love new. We're gonna start a new series and look at another law, a law that will bring expected results to yield increase in your life. Mm. That's if you choose to follow it. Let's get started. When I am talking about laws, I am not talking about the law, neither am I discussing the curse of the law, but laws. Everybody said the law, the, law. the, curse, of the, law, the curse of the law, and laws. And law. Now, there are distinctions between those three that I just mentioned that possibly most believers don't understand. And it is absolutely essential that I take, and let me just take my time and I don't wanna rush and, and, and I don't wanna get real excited about this. I, I wanna project in the way that it is at least alluring and attractive enough for you to stay interested. Uh, but we got to get to the point that we don't need someone to entertain us while they're informing us. Amen. Know this from the scripture. The Bible says that my people, not another group of people, are perishing specifically because of one reason. The scripture says they are perishing because they have lack of information lack of knowledge. And it was not suggesting that the knowledge was not present. It was really suggesting because if you look at that particular scripture, it says because they rejected knowledge. So the knowledge was there, but the knowledge that was there was rejected by the people. Now sometimes Knowledge is rejected for multiple reasons. It's not just because someone deliberately is setting themselves in the position where they decide that I don't want that because every blood bought, blood washed child of the Most High God should position themselves to want to receive the word of the kingdom so they can live thereby. But there are different kinds of scenarios that put people in the position where they reject the knowledge. Maybe it is presented as boring as I am right now, which shuts some people down to some degree where their attentiveness to what is being said is not clearly on board, so they, they shut down. Sometimes without the antics that are given in many cases from this position, 
people can't stay attentive enough because there are not enough nuances or dynamics that's going on with a particular lesson. I just want somebody to take their time and methodically use the word of God to share with me little by little, here little, there little, line upon line, so I can literally build reference points to where we're going so when I get to where I am or desiring to get, once I get there, you can never take me from that position. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Even if I lose everything, I know my way back. Oh, glory to God. Hunt your neighbor and say, I need to know my way back. So methodically now, I'm going to attempt to build this lesson before you so that you will have to hire someone to make you misunderstand. My teacher, Dr. Frederick K.C. Price, told me years ago that assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. Whatever you assume, you then are placed in the lowest form of knowledge that exists. But when you think even, when you think something, that's just a little bit above what you assume because anything you just think you can be talked out of. I don't need you in the position where you can be talked out of your wealth or talked out of your health or talked out of your good life. So you cannot think you know what I'm saying. The greatest level of knowledge is to know what you know. Woo, shout, I gotta know what I know. The reason why I'm not dead today is because I knew what I knew about he being wounded for my transgressions, bruised for my iniquity, and the chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes, I was healed, and if I was healed, I am healed, and if I am healed, I is healed. I ask you a question. Are you ready to go? Now, principles make results predictable. Principles make results predictable. Anytime I'm operating in the principle, a law, I literally make the result of that principle predictable. There are people who are more preference driven than they are principle driven. And when there's a principle on the table, they literally have the preference to decide if they're going to incorporate the principle where they cannot predict the result. I want life to be much easier for me, so therefore I comply with principles so I can predict the, the, pre, predict the desired results. Are you still with me here? Like a predictable law is the law of gravity. If you take your hind parts, I mean, if you take your blessed self to the top of this building and walk off the edge, there's a principle, a law in place that says whatever goes up must come down. We can pretty much predict how you're going to end up. If you know how they're going to end up, say, I know how they're going to end up. So now relative to where we're going with this, this happens to be a principle. It could easily be entitled the principle of little or the law of little. I choose law because I like to know or perceive or, 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 or absorb it as something I must comply with, the law. I am a law abiding citizen of these United States of America, and so am I a law-abiding citizen uh, in the laws of the kingdom of God. Okay, so I am not referring now to the law, which most people would shut me down because they know we are no longer under the law, which actually they are confused with because there are some of the laws that are under the law that the author of grace implemented. If you look in Ephesians chapter number six, verse one, he says just what Moses said under the law. 
he said, children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. And then he started talking about this is the first commandment with a promise. The law, the Old Testament, is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. Say that, class. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. <clears throat> now, listen to me. If you cannot carefully teach what I'm teaching you, then you don't know it. So it behooves you to not just sit here like a bump on the law to have your car stamped for this particular Sunday morning to say, I've gone to church, because there are many people who go to church but aren't the better as a result of it. They're just church goers. I don't want to just go to church. I want the church to become me. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So we come here so that we can gather information that caused us to become what Jesus in, intended for us to become as his sons and daughters. So now, as it relates to the law, we're not talking about that. We're certainly not talking about the curse of the law because the curse of the law was the penalty of disobedience in the law. So now we know there's no penalty because we're under now the grace dispensation and Jesus came and paid the price for us all so that whatever he took, we don't have to take. I'm preaching myself happy here today, boy. Turn to your neighbor and say, just stay with him. Just stay with him. Now, this law of little, if you would be so kind to go to Luke chapter number 16, we can begin right there. Luke chapter number 16. Herein lies a very interesting principle that we can just talk about for a little while because what I've discovered that faithfulness is the cornerstone of character. Faithfulness is the cornerstone of character. And wherever there's faithfulness, there's the ability to continue to carry out what God has intended for you to carry out. Those who just like preference have the ability to switch up whenever it's convenient. There are some who will not be principle driven because situations sometimes will put you in the place where your preference can get you out of. If you pick and choose what you like about the laws of God, then you're not a person of principle. You are a person of preference that literally is situational based upon what you want to do when you want to do it. Jesus said, why call me Lord and do not what I've asked you to do? So if he's going to be Lord at all, he has to be Lord of all. Say that, Lord, Lord. you are Lord of all. Lord of all. My, life, my life, the affairs of my life, life. the choices of my life, and the decisions of my life. Now let's look at something here. Put Luke chapter number 10, <coughs> pardon me, chapter number 16, verse number 10. Now, here Jesus is speaking and he's saying, here's a law, the law of little that he's discussing at this particular time. Because I, or no one else for that matter, can come up here and stand and teach on something that cannot be established in the word of God. A principle here, watch this law. Here's a law that I cannot afford to assume that you know because this is possibly where you are disqualifying yourself for more. It clearly states that he who is faithful in what is least is faithful 
also in much. Now, I added another word to this faithfulness. I'm not in jeopardy. I'm not in trouble. The changing of this doesn't mean you're changing its intent and motive. I know some of you are big time Bible scholars. I know you want to check me. <clears throat> Say, Pastor, the Bible said, he who adds, I understand that. I'm only adding something for clarity's sake, not, the, not to change the intent of the principle. When you add to change something, that's when you're in trouble. So he who is grateful and faithful in what is least will be grateful and faithful also in the much. And so I began to examine some areas of my life and I determined that a lot of the increase that I've had in my life has come from what I have demonstrated with what I have in my life. Mm. See, what most people don't understand, because you focus on what you don't have, you have not been able to master what you do have. Y'all missed that. Just let me talk to you. <clears throat> and you got to get a hold of this, that what you currently have is what God will use to determine if you are qualified for more. So now if he's taking what you have and you got your eyes on something that you don't have more than what you have, you won't manage properly even that which you have to qualify for God increasing you with more. Action, David said, are you still on this bus ride with us? See, because most people focus on what they don't have. And it literally pushes them out from being grateful for what they do have. Because what you do have is far more than some others that don't have what you have. And when you are not grateful, it will cause you to not be faithful even over that little. And then you're counseling out next level. Are you still here? See, while you're trying to get to your dream house, you ain't taking care of your present house and you're wondering why you can't get to where God has caused you to get to and all he's trying to do is build character in you about what you have right now because what you have right now, a lot of people don't have and God is saying, I got to get you to recognize what I have given you so that you can become grateful and faithful over what I have given Given you when you complaining about what you don't have you are discrediting what you do have and now you're being disqualified I'll go there this little lad had a two-piece fish dinner he shows up at a meeting it's five that who what I said the little lad had a two-piece fish dinner. He shows up at a meeting where there's 5,000 men. Now, in customary, when the Jews coach count men, they are not counting their wives and children. So we could have potentially had, if all of them were married, another 5,000, 10,000, and then all the little crumb snatchers. Y'all remember crumb snatchers? I asked you a question. Do you remember crumb snatcher? You got all these little crumb snatchers around. So we could have at least two per family. That's another 10,000 added to that 10,000 because family, a, a man with a family could easily equal up to that much. Then people were at this meeting all day long and the disciples said, Jesus, these people are hungry, man. We got to take a break and, and feed them. And they say that nearest Popeye's is, 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 is miles away from here and there's no way we can stop and get church's chicken or Popeye's chicken. We got to do our best with it. I got to add some of these antics for y'all that's just drifting off. <laughs> that is the saddest two-piece a fish that I have ever 
seen it all of my days. I don't even know if I want to eat looking at that fish. But this is it. <laughs> they got throwing some bread. They had two fish and five loaves of bread. Do you remember that? Where the bread? Oh, that's the bread. Oh, Lord, the bread looked like the basket. Okay, let's deal with this then. Let's deal with that. No, throw that back up. That's cool. Are you ready for a miracle? Because what you don't realize, you can look at this, and we got 20,000 people looking at this two pieces of fish and bread, and they don't know that this two piece and fish with five loaves of bread, once it gets in the right hands of, oh, come on, somebody, of the one who can create miracles with your little, and you despising your little, you got your eyes on somebody else's stuff, and you don't know there's a miracle in the law of little. You ought to be grateful for whatever you have. Come on, somebody. It's easy to look at what we have and want more, like wishing for a new car. But let me ask, if you are a cleaning service or any other maintenance service on, on your car that you currently have, as you have heard today, if you are faithful in taking care of it, what you currently possess, possess you will allow God to qualify you for more because he's taking what you have to determine if you qualify for more. So instead of wishing for what you do not have, master taking the best care of what you do possess and watch how God will increase you, I promise you. Come on, let me pray for you. On today, Heavenly Father, their lives will be radically changed for this law that they are putting their hearts towards and their minds towards setting themselves for an automatic outcome that the devil can't touch in any shape, form, or fashion. I believe that with them. I set myself in total agreement in Jesus' name. Amen. So my announcer is coming now to share with you some important resources on mastering the little that you have. And we'll be right back. Do you find yourself going through life consistently, desiring something you don't have? Wondering to yourself, I wish I had, or if I only had what they have? Not really stopping to appreciate the things you currently possess. To constantly desire the possessions of others can disrupt your believing and even disqualify you from obtaining more. But if you're ready, Pastor Michael Freeman will position you for increase by helping you become faithful and grateful with what God has already provided to you. In Pastor Mike's informative and engaging series, The Law of Little, he will provide the keys you need to receive abundant blessings in your life. This practical and insightful teaching series will prepare you for elevation over your current status. God desires to bless you, and He wants your increase to be something you expect over and over. What you heard on today's program is only a small portion of this powerful teaching. Call now with a gift of any amount to receive the law of little in its entirety. When you call, you can also receive two additional messages from Pastor Mike and the first encouraging teaching, Don't Be Fatigued in Your Giving. DVD will spur you to continue to give of yourself, your time and talents, despite negative or challenging circumstances in your life. Don't miss what God has for your tomorrow by becoming weary in your today. In the next motivating teaching, Right and Wrong Thinking Concerning Stewardship DVD, Pastor Mike shows you how to renew your thinking. You will better understand that whatever you establish in your soul changes your thinking and manifests itself in every area of your life. Renew your mind and the elevation you desire can soon follow. Receive two practical and essential DVD messages with your love gift of just $25 or more, or Pastor Mike will send you just the series, The Law of Little, for your love gift of any amount. Learn to appreciate what you have while you believe and expect God to supernaturally provide the increase you've been waiting for. Call now. Operators are standing by. Well, of course, we'll see you again right here as we continue our series on the law of little please connect with dd and i 
on Facebook and Instagram, or even online, www.spiritoffaith.org will get you that or gain you that access. We'll see you next week on Living Easy with me and D. How about that? That's Mike and Dee. See you later. Lord, thank you, because there are people who got to share bedrooms with complete strangers. They don't know where their next meal is coming from. But God, you have been so good to me. You put a roof over my head. You flush the toilet and rejoice because there are some who don't have one in water. At Spirit of Faith Christian Center, we are shaping lives, changing the world, and building strong families. We are proud to be a life-shaping, world-changing, transformational community. We are a supernatural church with supernatural people doing supernatural things. And if you're ever in the D.C. or Maryland area, we would love for you to join us at one of our locations. For more information about Spirit of Faith or for service times and locations, please visit us online at spiritoffaith.org. We look forward to seeing you here. In 2014, D.D. Freeman and Spirit of Faith Ministries purchased a small, dilapidated townhouse community in the heart of Prince George's County, Maryland. Since then, they have been working to renovate 12 townhomes so that they can open D.D.'s House of Hope, a ministry dedicated to providing emergency shelter, traditional housing, and social services to the women and their dependent children who are victims of domestic violence. Pastor D.D. Freeman is committed to recognizing and responding to her community's need for domestic violence services for women and children. D's House of Hope is a catalyst in transforming the lives of the women and children in the community. It will be a safe haven for victims of abuse to receive housing, emotional support, and services focused on safety, empowerment, and self-sufficiency. Our goal is to help the resident to free these women from the generational cycle of domestic violence and the fear of abuse. We've done so much to love and nurture these women through our counseling services at Spirit of Faith. But Dee's House of Hope will allow us to take it to the next level, to transforming the lives of these women and children. Now it's your turn to join Pastor Dee Dee and Spirit of Faith Ministries. When you call today to financially support and come in agreement with us, you will be a part of the change in hope that the victims of domestic violence desperately need. We cannot do this without you. I know that with your help, we can do this. With your prayers and your financial funding, we can create a safe, loving, comforting community for those who need it. It's time for us to come together and support these women and children. Call or go online today to donate to Dee's House of Hope and help us change the lives of these women together. We can be a house of hope. Together, we can fight to end the cycle of abuse once and for all.